we are approaching a, a period of centenaries and remembrances and all of, of that. And over many years, I've heard you speaking and I've heard you speaking in different settings and I've heard you being interviewed and I've heard you doing different stuff. And I've heard you having hostile interviews and I've heard you having stupid interviews and I've heard you having great interviews. I can't think of a single event where you had an opportunity to speak, where you didn't speak of reconciliation. You didn't speak, including the Belfast Easter commemoration you'd done a few years back. I can't think of a single case where you, you didn't make the point of reaching out, embracing, understanding differences uh, and all of that. And, and this period of commemorations, north and south. And of course, reaching out doesn't only apply to the north. I mean, we still have the scars of the Civil War or, or the counter-revolution, depending on how you look at it. But in terms of, in terms of that need to or the the ability to, is it still high on your agenda? Is it still something that you drive with the passion? Yes. Um, and for, for those of us who passionately believe that Irish unification, a reunified Ireland is the best idea and the best prospect for all of our people. And I believe that. I also believe, Joe, that we are in our own time writing our own chapters now of history. Uh, and I believe that we will have a referendum on unity. I believe that we can win that referendum and win it well. And I believe above all else that we can actually construct a new Ireland, that we can build, that we can right the wrong of a century of partition and all of the damage that that has been done and the damage has been economic it's been social it's been cultural it's been psychological it has damaged and fractured the relationships that we most rely on um for us to live our fullest uh, lives individually and and as communities so for any of us that are that are committed to that project and that's that's why I go to work every day because I believe that we can do this together. Um, and therefore, of course, reconciliation has to be at the heart of that. And I'm, you know, I, I'm conscious even in using that word that for some people, that sounds maybe like something very highfalutin or abstract or, or high level. I am talking very basically about people knowing each other, listening to each other, appreciating each other, acknowledging each other, acknowledging difference and not running away from it, acknowledging hurt and um, recognizing it in the, in the other and, and acknowledging uh, above all else that we all bring something incredibly valuable, invaluable in fact, to the discussion around what will Ireland look like in a decade, in two decades. What does the reunified um, Ireland look like? How does it operate? And I, I have had the what I regard as the great privilege of meeting people. It is the great privilege of this job, by the way, of, of being mm -hmm. an elected uh, person and being a political leader is that you, you meet mm -hmm. uh, and uh, have access to just the most extraordinary range of people and views and experiences that I don't think you would access possibly in any other walk of life. So I have had the privilege of meeting, talking to, listening to everyone from, uh, you know, young people who have had no real direct experience of the conflict as it was, who see the world totally through different eyes than, than you, than I, than their parents or, the, or their grandparents. I've had the great privilege of sitting down with people who not alone knew conflict, but knew grievous, grievous loss um, through the actions of the IRA or, or any of the other combatant groups, loyalism, who have suffered at the hands of the British state and their, their policy of, of collusion, um, who suffered the degradation of not being wanted in a hostile state and others who feel a very strong sense of allegiance to that very, very state. I, I have met that range of people 
And I make a point of meeting people where they are, accepting where they are, without ever relinquishing or, or giving any misunderstanding as to who I am and, mm -hmm. and what I represent. And uh, for me, that is the essence of the Reconciliation Project. We're not looking for retreat. We're not looking for surrender. We're not, and, and I don't think, nor should we ever ask somebody who is a Republican, a nationalist, a loyalist, or a unionist um, to abandon that sense of their identity. I think that's a, that's a you know, a, a fool's errand. The, 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 the central point for me about reconciliation is acknowledgement, acceptance, and then appreciation actually to have an appreciation of each other. And I'm very conscious, Joe, particularly in your part of the world, day in and day out in ways that are considered small and unspectacular and that will never be reported by the columnists that you've talked about earlier by many of them. <coughs> those, those acts of reconciliation are happening every day. Like this isn't something that's going to be delivered by the great and the good, although the great and the good, I would hope, would lead constructively on this project. This is something that people ourselves on the ground, the grassroots, that's, that's really where the action is going to happen. But yes, like, and you have noticed when I speak at different events, and particularly, I suppose, at our own events, at Republican events, I make a point of talking about this because as yeah. Republicans, we are the ones arguing for the New Ireland for an end to partition. And I believe we have a particular a capacity, but also a particular responsibility to demonstrate, as Tone said, that this is about Catholic, Protestant and dissenter. It's about every citizen in their own right, on their own terms, because everybody has their part to play in what is an incredibly exciting period in Irish history and Irish political life. Unbelievably exciting. If you listen to me, Hall Martin, and some of them down here and in the north, you hear, you know, the the idea of reunification and kind of like threat, the language of threat and uncertainty and and fear, <coughs> and even the language of loss. That's completely, completely to miss the point. The language of uh, uh, reunification is opportunity and progress and advancement and gain and win 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 all round and i think we need to very consciously focus our debate in that positive way and not give way to the naysayers who say no this cannot change no we can't achieve this no we can't do this together we can i absolutely believe that we can and I, and by the way i believe that we will 